Every single day, our 28 million cattle drop around half a million tonnes of cow dung a day over this tired, burnt out continent. And um, if there's ever a continent on this planet that needs every gram of this valuable material being put back underground and put to good use, it is Australia. Now, our, every one of our 28 million cattle drop around about 12 cow pads per day. And the average weight of these is about one and a half kilograms. Now, when dung beetles are working well, they for every litre of dung they take into the soil, they bring up about two kilograms of subsoil. When dung is dropped in the paddock, the beetles generally fly upwind. They can actually pick up the scent of a fresh dung being dropped a kilometre away. So the beetle will fly upwind for a kilometre to the food source, to the dung, they then feed for a couple of hours on the leftover protein in the dung. The beetles during this period uh, mate and uh, then they go about digging a tunnel under the dung and uh, that, that tunnel can go down to one, two or three hundred millimetres. The beetles then commence carting dung down the tunnel. They form a little ball. An egg is laid in the ball of dung and uh, it eventually hatches, develops into a larva, then a pupa, and then another beetle, and that beetle burrows to the surface and then flies off to fresh dung elsewhere uh, eventually and commences the whole process all over again. But by putting the dung underground, <coughs> the beetles not only aerate the soil, they improve microbial activity, which thrives. Earthworms can move into the habitat uh, you sequester uh, massive amounts of CO2 in the tunnel system with the microbial activity. Uh, scientists have told me that uh, CO2 can be sequestered in soil just as efficiently uh, with microbial activity as what plankton stores CO2 in the ocean. And this will go on forever. Scientists at the CSIRO carefully selected these species to take dung down to the grass root zone. There's little point in taking dung to a greater depth than 300 millimetres. It's all uh, governed by the climates. Uh, you see you need a different series of dung beetles in northern Australia in the tropical zones. You need other species for the arid zones in northern Australia. And um, then we also have dung beetle species that will survive and thrive in Victoria and Tasmania. So uh, one of the main points I have to ask farmers is I want an exact location of where your farm is. Some species will work in spring, other species summer, others autumn and others winter. We even have a very good winter working species for southern Australia and it becomes active in May when the first winter rains arrive. It works from May, June, July into August and um, the beetles then go into hibernation and then reappear the following year in May when the first winter rains arrive. So once we establish what species is uh, needed, I then go about harvesting these beetles on properties where they're well established. Uh, I get on very well with the Australian farmers and uh, so I select species, I harvest beetles on, on a farm, bring them back to my house in Canberra, separate all the different species and then we have the weights of all the different species worked out so I can very easily establish what weight of a particular species uh, is 1,050 beetles. We post express the beetles all around the country. Uh, I can send beetles from Canberra to Geraldton in a mere uh, 36 hours for a mere $16. This is the answer to nutrient and chemical runoff from farmland into waterways into the creeks, rivers, estuaries and oceans.